I mean, what a week, what a two weeks. I, I, we could reel off the accolades, but I don't think I've got enough to take. Uh, you know, fastest sector times, all six. Fastest ever standing start, fastest superbike lap, overall uh, fastest lap, 13 wins. I'm sure I've missed some. And you, you must require a bigger mantelpiece. It's been a pretty amazing two weeks, to be honest. Yeah, I am super lucky to have the team and sponsors behind me that helped me put me here. Without them, I wouldn't be able to ride. So um, first of all, thank you to everyone who's, who's helped to get me here, even in the first place, even the people that are no longer involved. Them people are the people that helped me get to where I am today. So um, huge thanks to them. Huge thanks to the Monster BMW team by FHO Racing. Worked absolutely tirelessly, particularly with the Superbike, because it's been a pain in the ass. I know we've spoken about it already, but today we actually got the bike right right from the warm-up lap this morning. Uh, immediately, before I'd even got to the bottom of Bray Hill, I had a big sigh of relief because I knew the bike was already in a much, much better place. And in the warm-up lap or in the Yeah, in the warm-up lap, in the warm-up lap immediately straight away. I'd not even got to the bottom of Bray Hill and I was super happy already. So, um, yeah, boys have done a fantastic job and uh, proved, proved what we can do when everything's working right. You know, Sunday didn't go our way, but that's just the way racing goes sometimes. Um, some things did go our way, like the Super Twin race, yeah. you know, when other people were breaking down and ours kept going, and that's, that's just part of the job. It's an endurance race as much as anything else. Um, but to win the senior in style, 35-5 standing start, I think really kind of sets a bit of a statement <laughs> about what we can actually do if we really want to. And uh, yeah, just super, super happy for the team, all the guys and girls here. We've got a big team in FHO racing, and um, everyone pulls their weight, everyone digs in and cracks on, and that's what makes the difference in the end. You're fast out the traps, weren't you, today? Yeah, I was pretty fast out the traps. A lot of that was because I did the, the, the warm-up lap. As much as I didn't want to do the warm-up lap, we had to because of the problems we've had with the Superbike. So, I mean, so six laps around here for a senior is a long-ass way. And to then go, oh, we need you to do an extra warm-up lap, I was like, seven laps is, yeah, 260 miles. Of pounding around here is hard work on a super bike um, but anyway we had to do it boys did awesome the bike worked absolutely mega from that warm-up lap onwards so I was super happy with it and uh, felt like I could actually be boss of the bike rather than the bike bossing me around which is what the rest of the week's been like so uh, yeah really really happy overall and just massive thanks to all the support out there honestly the people lining the track waving their hands their programs their hats their t-shirts it's been unbelievable so uh, a massive thank you to all of them and a final note from myself really is just thinking of all of Raul Torres's friends family uh, a lot of us knew Raul he's a good guy and uh, super sad that he's no longer with us so my thoughts are with him and his family our sentiments too uh, talking of emotions, you must be right on the crest of a wave at the moment. You'll sleep well tonight, won't you? What's the plan? Celebrations? Yeah, there's definitely going to be a few celebrations about, uh, absolutely. Um, but for, for a start, we've got a lot of people hanging around here, <laughs> waiting for some photographs and, and signatures. And uh, I've done about an hour of it already, but I'm going to carry on and do some more now. I'll let you crack on, Pete. Congratulations and thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. Thank you. John, where, you, where, where to begin? Look at the smile on your face. I, I saw you coming down the return road. Everyone was cheering, going crazy. I could almost see the elation in your eyes. Tell me yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's the emotional it is side. elation. You know, it's elation. It's relief. It's I crossed that line so many times as a senior, and when you see that checkered flag, you think, oh, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm I'm okay. I'm in one piece. I've had a good result. You know, silver replica, and you know, seventh place, and then. I can deal with that, I can deal with the result, that's fine, you know, I did 130s, 130s, 131 on the last lap, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit behind the leading guys, but that's just where it is, I'm afraid, but, uh, you know, to do 226 miles in that heat, and, it, and it's hot, you know, it's humid, and, and it's quite windy here, you're not so bad, but on the track there's like quite gusty bits, but I'm not going to moan, I think it, the conditions were beautiful, I've never known a TT to be like this, so, uh, yeah, it was good, you know, hit all the apexes, two good pit stops, just one little mistake in the pit stop. I didn't have it in neutral on the first lap, so I made it quite difficult for the team to change the back wheel. But other than that, just safe. Maybe a bit too safe, but safe. 31183, I think it was the last lap, wasn't it? Flying lap, are you pleased with that? Yes, I am, yeah. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. How was the bike running? The bike was mint, the bike was absolutely mint. There's no problems whatsoever. The bike's probably, probably better than I am, you know, with a real good, proper pilot on it, a younger lad who, he would be a lot closer to the front, but uh, 
you know, Nathan was injured, it's a shame, but, you know, I've really enjoyed the fortnight. I've enjoyed riding every minute of it with the bike. Uh, a little bit disappointed with the stock of fuel pump going, which is unheard of. But other than that, yeah, it's, you know, three solid finishes, yeah. three silver replicas. Six, six seven, eight. And a, eight, yeah, yeah 108 yeah. star. Yeah. And, you know, I keep going back to, you know, 17, I had to grow 52 mil in my leg back. You know, I, 18, I still couldn't ride. 19, with disaster. Covid, and I was like, you know, am I, am I ever going to be able to do it again? I've come back to hold my own, you know. So I'm proud of what we've achieved. Me, as me as a family, and my family and my team and everything, and we're all on the same page, you know. All of my Honda mechanics are, <coughs> are great lads and uh, and lasses. So it's it's been a joy to do it, and uh, you know, here I am in one piece with a, another senior under my belt. What about TT24? Any thoughts? Just had a little conversation with the team in there. Already? Yeah. You know, if I'm in silver replica zone, then why not? <laughs> Maybe. Could do. I'll have to get. Have a, have, a, have a download, really. and They might not give me a shot. <laughs> they might not get me ride back. But <laughs> if they give me the ride, I'll probably have another do. What's the plan for the rest of the season, John? You've got mentoring with Nathan. You're doing some super stock stuff. Obviously, you've got the Bennett's track days, but. Yeah, some Bennett's track days, some. Uh, classic TT bit of Manx Grand Prix later in the year. Uh, I'd like to do brands, BSB, maybe have to sit down with the team and, and have a think about it. Uh, I'd like to do brands and the other Alton Park round, Stars of Dali, a few other bits and pieces. Maybe Macau at the end of the year if I can twist, sure. twist uh, Harvey's arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Hang on a minute, there's no nude streaking or tattoos going no on. No tattoos, have we? No tattoos, mate. We still have one. Yeah. No. Not left, mate. Uh, I, I was. Not left. Yeah, not left. <laughs> That's why I asked me. Davey, how are you feeling? Relieved. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I was. I set off on lap one and I thought, there's no way I'm doing six laps of this. Um, not really eating in a couple of days and uh, obviously been feeling really shit. Woke up this morning feeling better, but. Um, yeah, no energy. <laughs> so, just pleased to finish. That's a tough race, isn't it? Yeah. It's the hardest race in the world. That's a tough, tough, tough race. I mean, I had when you sweat you... running in my eyes and everything. I was like, and you, the bike's red hot. Everything's red hot. Humid as anything, wasn't it? As soon as I set off, I was out. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted a drink. Coming at the first pit stop, and I was like, guys, I'm knackered. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm knackered. I tried. Just thought, I'd carry on, get another lap, another lap, kind of lap, it, lap by lap, but just to get to the end. Guys with the top 10. At least you well, kept going, fair play. Yeah, yeah congratulations. Just bits to pull in. Yeah, just bits to carry on. So, good Dave, on can you. I ask a, a quick question about the emotional side of, of, of coming across that line on, 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 after six laps? I, I said to John, I saw his, I could see the elation in his eyes as he came down the return road. How does it feel? Just try and sum it up for, for those who have got no experience. Of it's course. hard to explain. It's like nothing else. You never finish another race and you get that feeling. It's, it's relief. Like, you feel like you've. It's almost a feeling of winning when you haven't, you're just like relieved, but I'm also proud that you've done six laps around, like a six lap race. It's Absolutely. Just, you are genuinely proud of yourself even when you're fit and healthy, you think, like, I've done it, like, because it is a, such a mental battle, like, concentrating that hard for six laps is, your head's absolutely fried coming over the line, and yeah, it's, there's nothing like it. Well played, well done. I want yeah. everyone here to give you a round of applause yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. John, what are you eating? What's the plan? Uh, <laughs> I've no idea, I'm just going to snack. <laughs> snack and swill it down with some beers, yeah. We've got fridges full of cold beers, so I'm going to go and get destroyed with my family and uh, some friends here. Yeah. Good man, thanks for your time, Thank well you done, mate. congratulations. Oh, that is nice and frothy. What's your first question? <laughs> I'm just going to watch you drink. Let's get, oh, I'm a big fan of Guinness. For about 10 minutes. Damn right. Tom, that's the sound of, um, shall I call it a successful Depression. week? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. You've done 130 miles an hour. Yeah. You've got a lot more fans and a lot more people respecting your art now than you did two art. weeks ago. I look like a drumstick squishy. Right now, you know what I mean? You're creating a new, a new genre, a new vibe. And I look like I've been working down the pit, you know what I mean? So it's, it's one of those.
one of those. So this is the final day of our TT Diaries. Yeah. Thank you so far for your time and efforts mm. and entertainment. But um, <laughs> Superbike Day, sir, tell me, about, tell me about it from your perspective. It was all going well. Um, yeah, it was going well. It was going well. Um, we didn't do the warm-up lap and... I think I was discussing this with you last time and it's a fear of missing out on that side of things and woke up th thinking this morning we're going to be riding from Liverpool to London and I think I've mentioned that on every single episode we've done so far but when you actually sit down and think about that it's just insane it's absolutely brilliant but I definitely led into this one like totally more relaxed not as relaxed as you can see me floating mid-air waiting for me Guinness to sell so soothing but Went into this, totally relaxed, and just because we've already hit the target, we've already hit the, you know, the ideal goal, but I knew we could go faster, I know we could build upon it, and the great news on that side of things is, you know, it's the most relaxed I've ever been going down Bray Hill, and yeah, we did some bike alterations, and I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm struggling to put this together, because... I just really want to tell you, it went to shit. That's, that's exactly what happened. You know, <laughs> the clutch went. Plot, which plot was, spoiler. Yeah, plot spoiler. <laughs> it went to shit. You know, no, no, it was, no, I was really enjoying it. Uh, Michael Rutt was in eye line, but like the first couple of races, I caught him quite early and I dropped my guard too much. And I'm thinking, right, I can just go catch him every time. Not at all. Michael, yeah. Michael Rutt is an absolute weapon on any motorcycle you put him. And he's on just, an RC two one three VS, isn't he? It's not any old weapon. It's exactly. And you know, it, grander lap, I think they they, they said. I know. And he starts ten seconds ahead of you. Yeah, and he, he was just that little bit further, and I thought, no, here we go. And then I came up to my first pit board, which was the gooseneck, and I saw P twelve, and I thought, well, this has gone horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. And at that point, I'm thinking, all right, no, just dig in. And because you do, you see a rubbish pit tap, like um, a lap position, you think, it almost relaxes you more because you just, that expectation's gone out the window. And you get wound up, but in the same breath you calm down. So I just thought, right, let's just dig in and go for it. And then came off the mountain, I saw P10. I thought, this is a bit more like it. And then came around Braddon and it just started slipping. I mean, it was slippier than a greasy spoon, you know what I'm talking. Who was that prisoner? He used to get covered in goose fat and used to fight all the time. No, I didn't. There was a, there, there's someone screaming at the telly now going, there is that fighter. Bear with me, bear with me. Lauren? Yes? Who was that prisoner, the world's most dangerous prisoner? Who used to get covered in goose fat and used to fight in prison? Bronson. Oh, you're yeah, right. Bronson. Charles. I am Charles to his friends. Charles Br Bronson, that's him. You know what I mean? That's exactly how I was feeling. <laughs> Exactly. You know, I was that wasn't going through your mind at the time. No, it wasn't. No, no, just um, oh bugger. And then it just started slipping and slipping is, and slipping and clutch, slipping right? and slipping on the clutch side yeah. of things. And unfortunate, we've definitely had a week of incredibly highs, incredible lows. But that's the Isle of Man, you know. And it's ups and downs, ups and downs. But now I'm just having a You're enjoying it, aren't you? Just enjoying it, enjoying and, myself. And the first lap was a 29.7 from a standing mm. start. Darn right, son. They are. <laughs> See, road racing is where it's at. You know what I mean? You don't get this in any other competitive sport. One big family. It, one dodgy, dodgy well, family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, a 129 from Sam. So I wasn't aware of that at the time. And I was making shooting mistakes. And it just shows that the 130 lap wasn't a fluke. You know, we were in the 29s. But when you push that bit too much, you pay the price for it. You know, and it's like... In the stock race, I lost three seconds because we couldn't turn the bike. I put too much, I softened off the rear too much to try and soak up the bumps instead of being on the nose to be able to turn at high speed. But you live and learn, and I generally thought we had a very, very good setup, and that showed in the beginning of that race. Um, it felt good and it felt slow. And when you go slow around here, it tends to be a bit quicker. But unfortunately, yeah, we didn't quite make it because last year I had a bit of a tumble, and yeah, it's I'm I'm in, I'm in one piece this year, and that, that's what's really important, you know, as far as the TT is concerned. You know, we've um, we've had some incredibly rough times around the TT. You know, Raul, you know, he, he sadly lost his life, and he um, and he himself being the only incident is incredibly unfortunate, but it's been. 
yeah, it's it's um, that's the risk that we run around here, and he, he loved racing around here. But it's been overall um, a fantastic event in that side of things. Back next year. Oh, oh, try and keep me away, my man. Try and keep me away. You know, I've got a score to settle. You know, we've come here like I keep winding on and harping on about that we um we progressed and this place is all about momentum hold momentum we've got that at the moment and next year we just need to go faster it's that simple that simple but now it's plenty of pints 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 yeah you've got 11 and a half months to, th to, 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 mm. to plan well we're back in the manx though of course you've got an entry at the end of august haven't you yeah yeah so back on a you know getting the race around here twice a year it's uh it's uh it's important and also that momentum continues into the TT, you know, extra laps is, you know, it's crucial. Laps is key round here. There you go. What are what you, are you riding? on with? What are you on with? Are you coming to the Manx? I'd Put like an entry to. in. I'm not, well, I don't race, but I'd like to, I'd, I'd give it a whirl. Damn I've right, I've seen you on a track day. Yeah. I know what you're capable of. Just put an entry in, it'll be all right. Done, um, I've done an 88.5 mile an hour lap around the Isle of Man, I'll have you know. There you go. <laughs> well, better watch me back. Better watch me back. When I didn't, this is not about me, but when I didn't know where I was going, I just started waving at people. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but I've tried that once and nearly <laughs> binned it. There you are, simple as that. Oh, crazy. You've got to put the handles in, kids. See the bit there? Push that down. Push, go on, go on, trap your fingers. There we are. You know them aluminium trolleys that trap your hands everywhere? They're like 700 quid each. We nearly witnessed that there. We, we literally just, we nearly lost another finger in the team. You know, you've got to, you've got to lose a digit to hang around with me. It's that simple. <laughs> Don't we still carry on with the F900 Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've um, we had a bit of a we've got a little bit of an issue with the F nine hundred being a new class. You know, it was bound we're bound to find little niggles as such. It's not a major issue with the bike, far from it. But BMW have been absolutely fantastic as far as trying to get on the case. Um, I'm going to get home and hopefully get some more answers out of them. But as far as a manufacturer getting involved in the championship, they're not just going. Well, there's the bikes. Get on with it yourself. You know, BMW, BMW Motorrad have been very very open, very honest, and being very proactive. So when I get home, get the answers, and I think the blunt side of it is just go faster uh, when they pull out the form and the dyno sheet. But no, we've had a little problem, and the lads at Fortis Racing, I call them Fortis because it sounds a bit more gladio you know, gladiator kind of thing, but the lads at Fortis have um, done a cracking job getting the, the Belgrave F900 up and running. What's your sort of key takeaway from the TT23? What's my favourite takeaway? Well, that Chinese, as well. Chinese, to be honest. Yeah. What do you like on your chips? What do I like on my chips? Mushy peas. You know I mean, gravy, gravy, if you don't eat it quick enough, just sogs it up to, you know mm. what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like a, a rich tea at the bottom of a cup of tea. It doesn't, oh, doesn't make sense, mate. Okay. You know, you, you're just glagging <laughs> with liquid cement. It's just not right. <laughs> Young sir, thank you for your time and congratulations on this week. Thank, um, well, thank you for letting me be in the most unprofessional interview that you've probably ha you've done in ages. So, and obviously, congratulations to Pete Hickman, who you've probably already interviewed. That's just outstanding, outstandingly quick. And John, I have no idea what he's doing, but you know what I like about John? It's just, he's just a racer through and through. He's out there. Where did he finish? Six. Eight. Doesn't matter. It, he's top he's ten. Six, six, seventh, eight, and a DNF this week. You know, you know, it, uh, but so three top tens, yeah. Three top tens. And... Everyone writes him off, but you can never, ever, ever write that man off. The man is just a full, legitimate racer. And to come racing around here and to do that is just class. He's so, super smooth, isn't he? That's it. He's probably not going to watch us back, but if he's watching us back, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a fangirl of him, you know what I mean? But, no, everyone who's raced here is just deserves a few of these, without a doubt. Well done, Dom.